Welcome to my lecture online. In this set of videos, we're going to explore Newton's laws a little bit more. We're going to talk about Newton's first, second, and third law, primarily Newton's second law, and we're going to apply these to various examples, very sometimes interesting examples, a little bit different from the norm, and the, the exciting part actually is to try and figure out how we're going to attack a problem like that and how we're going to find the answer. For example, in this example, we are supposed to find the force required to keep the small mass from sliding down. So what's happening here? Well, we have two masses, a large one resting on the floor and a small one seemingly magically attached to the first one. Now it's not really attached there, but it's not supposed to be sliding down because this force is accelerating both masses fast enough so that it will create a large enough friction force to keep the block from sliding down. So what's going on here? Well, notice if we draw the forces, we might get a better idea. First of all, we have the force of gravity pulling the small mass down, and then we're supposed to have a friction force in the opposite direction, keeping the block from sliding. Now, normally the friction force is defined by the normal force times the coefficient of friction. And in this case, of course, it should be the static coefficient of friction because the block is not supposed to move. So where's the normal force coming from? Because normally the normal force comes from a mass resting on the surface and on the surface pushing back, which is not what's happening in this case. And that may be the, the hard part to understand. Well, what's really happening is that if this force is large enough to provide a large enough acceleration to the right for both blocks together, then the force pushing against a small block will then become the normal force. So here, there will be a normal force created by this force pushing both blocks to the right. And so the force then represents the force of the big block pushing against the small block. And how large is that normal force? Well, that normal force is equal to the mass times acceleration because that normal force is the force that will give the small block the acceleration to the right. And so now we can say, because of that, the friction force which is equal to the normal force times mu is now going to be mass times acceleration times mu. And so now that we have the friction force, we realize that this must be sufficiently large to equal the force due to gravity. Once it is, the block will not slide down. So what we need to know now is what is that friction force going to be equal to? It's going to be the mass of the block times acceleration times mu sub s. So what we don't have here, because we do have the mass, and we do have the coefficient of static friction, we don't have the acceleration. So we first have to figure out what the acceleration is of the whole system. So here we can say that F net equals the mass total times acceleration of the whole system. And this would be the total mass of the system. So that means that F, which is the force that's pushing it, and notice there's no coefficient of friction on the surface here, so there's no friction force pushing back. So the net force is the force pushing, which is equal to the total mass, m plus m, times acceleration. So therefore, the acceleration is equal to the force pushing the two blocks divided by the sum of their two masses. Once we have this, we can plug that in here in order to find the friction force. So now we realize that these two must be equal to each other. So we can say that the friction force is equal to the force due to gravity on the small block, and the friction force is ma times mu sub s equals mg. And notice right away that these two masses will cancel out. And now for a, we can then replace that by this. And so we have f divided by uh, m plus big M times mu sub s is equal to g. And since we're looking for the force, right, the force required, we then solve this equation for F. So we say that F is equal to G times mu sub s. Oh, no, no, that's not right. G times the masses, M plus M, because I have to cross multiply, divided by mu sub s. And that's the force required to keep the small block from sliding. Now let's throw in some numbers and see what we actually get numerically. So it would be 9.8 meters per second squared. To sum of their two masses, that would be, let's see here, 10 plus 2 kilograms. And the whole thing divided by mu sub s, which is 0 0.4. So with a calculator, 
we can get a numerical value, 9.8 times 12 divided by 0.4, and the force has to be 294 newtons. And that's how we solve a problem like that.